Simplified Chaos, Episode 43. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Welcome to Simplified Chaos. This is Jillian, one of your hosts, and I'm with my lovely co-host, Nicholas. What's going on, folks? We got another wonderful episode here for you today. Jilly, what are we getting into? Jilly? Oh. Do you normally call me Jilly? All the time. I don't know why. (laughs) Since probably episode one. Oh, shenanigans. Okay. For some reason, I was like... You need to go back and re-listen to some of these things. Yeah. Today, so I'm Man, way off topic. Way off. Today, today's topic. Let's get on to today's topic. I know. Today's topic is all about how we started simplifying. Because I know it sounds simple, but. The genesis of simplifying. The Kaselniak's <laughs> life. The, the deets. We're just digging a little bit deeper to kind yeah. of share what our process looked like and why it made sense to us. Yeah. For those of you who are looking to simplify your lives, let this be your guide. If it works for you. If it works for that's you. That's cool. If not, yeah. tweak it. Make it your exactly. own. Exactly. But before we dive into the topic, let's show a little gratitude, Jilly. What are you grateful for today? Today, I'm grateful for our listeners. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm always grateful for our listeners, but you're especially grateful for our listeners today? Well, yeah, because I normally don't take the time. Like, I do read reviews, but I try not to focus on the reviews. Right. But I read one a couple months ago that it really hit my soul and it made me feel real good about what we're doing. And I, if anyone out there listens and you are connecting to this in some sort of way, please leave us a review on iTunes. It would be so wonderful because that kind of helps motivate us to keep going. And that kind of shows that we are making some type of ripple effect out there. But I wanted to read one of the reviews that somebody wrote that just made me smile. Okay, go for it. The title of this review, and they gave us five stars, yay for us, is Hidden Gem. Ooh. And it's by uh, Yachty, Texas. I found Jillian on Instagram and follow her because a lot of her posts and advice really resonate with me. She is very down to earth and practical, and this podcast is a great way to go more in depth with life subjects that I wish I could discuss with family and friends. I really recommend this podcast. That's very nice. It's very sweet. super. So thank you for taking the time to just send some positive vibes our yes. way. I I truly truly appreciate all of our listeners, and if you we 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 yes we truly appreciate all our listeners. We do. But yeah, I just wanted to share that because it was just very thoughtful that someone took the time out of their day to just write a couple sentences. But it's funny how that those couple of sentences just really made my day. Yeah, means a lot. Yes. No, that's great. What about you? What are you grateful for? Undercooked meat. <laughs> I'm guessing you're relating to dinner tonight. I am. Yeah. So we had burgers from one of our favorite burger places, which is right around the corner from us called Libations. And I usually get my burger medium rare. Tonight, it was a little bit more on the rare side, and it was delicious. Mine was cooked a little less, too, I noticed. Yeah. But it was very, yeah, very I, good. So I, I'm very hesitant to order rare, just because I don't know how rare restaurants are going to do it. But when they hit rare and they, they nail it, it's such a good burger. And is it rare that they hit rare? I don't know because I don't order, order <laughs> rare all the time. So I'm, I'm kind of nervous to do that. But yeah. they nailed it tonight, and uh, it was it was goddamn delicious. It was quite Sorry tasty. for any vegans out there. I, I apologize if I'm talking about my meat. Don't be sorry for liking meat. That's, I love that's meat. What, that's you, babe. Especially when it's cooked rare perfectly. <laughs> so good. We love the beef. Yes. So that's what my, my gratitude is. Not as uh, deep as yours. Um, but yeah, we can show gratefulness for a lot of different things. So, Jilly, topic us. What are we talking about? Well, we already know what we're talking about. I know, but but let's dive into it. The reason why we wanted to cover kind of, I think you know the why. We we talked about the why, our, our very first episode of why we got started. But I think 
Way back in December we, of 2018. <laughs> I wanted to really rewind because I noticed this question was popping up a lot. Um, when I was getting interviewed for other podcasts, a lot, the first question a lot of times they would ask me is that people want to know how, like, how are you doing it? Like, where are you starting first? And then what are you going after that? And it's hard to give a step-by-step -step answer because I know yeah. everyone's life is different, but I did want to share what we did. So that way, if somebody doesn't know where to start and they're overwhelmed and stressed, that maybe they can look at where we started first and maybe that might help set them in the direction. Yeah. So I really wanted to kind of dive deep into the details about what we did first and then what where we went from then and how it's a continuous cycle. Like we're doing this over and over and over again because it makes sense for us. Yeah. And we have to keep doing it because we're constantly changing and, you know, we're always evolving and our life seasons are, you know, they're different every single day. So something that you always bring up in a lot of our podcast is practicing and we are always practicing mm -hmm. whatever it is. If it's simplification, our relationship, uh, we're, we're always practicing to make sure that we are doing things the right way and and every like everything you have to do if you want to do it great you have to practice at it so that's something that we continue to do every day and i i do dive into that topic about just mindset how we kind of have to have that mindset that we're never going to be an expert because as soon as we think we're there then we think we're done the work but really the work is never ending it's but never that's ending. what makes growth and learning so exciting and it's definitely a mindset shift as well when we have been simplifying. So I thought first we could talk about um, our process that we've done. Yeah. And this process has made sense to us. It may not make sense to you, but again, it doesn't need to make sense to anybody else as long as it makes sense to you and meaning to you. I think. And again, you, can, you know, yeah. your values might be different than ours. So it yes. has to align with your values too. So. And that's the first thing on our step. I think the first thing we did when we realized that um, there was more overwhelm and stress, at least in my life, I think we had to discuss and talk about what we value in life. And I know that could be different in different seasons of mm -hmm. our life, but we had to talk about like, what are our core values and what's our mindset about them? So like, for example, I know one of our values is time and family and health and experiences. And when I say the mindset around it, I think my mindset around health was different before I had Lucille. Oh, 100%. It was about aesthetics, the way I looked. I mean, don't get me wrong. It felt great, the workouts that I was doing. But I think now I value health more as being alive and being able to walk and run and not how I look. So I think just establishing what you truly value in life is the first step in simplifying. Because if you don't know what you're running towards, mm -hmm. then you can't make the decisions and the steps to go that direction. Yeah. And, and you know, I think, you know, health has always been very important to us, you know, ever since like the beginning of our relationship, like in my twenties, I was not healthy whatsoever. Like, um, just not eating great food, always buying lunch and, and everything like that. And then, you know, I had started on the healthy track just a little bit before we started dating. And then, you know, you really kind of helped me in that area. And, and, you know, obviously I've been a lot better. There's a lot of things that I've cut out. There's things that I've introduced that have, you know, helped with my health. And I attribute that to getting the highest rating on our life insurance. <laughs> Gosh. Man, that was great. Just hearing that, your... that bill of health. <laughs> That's where you're going. Hey, by. you never know. 37 years old and healthy as a horse. Oh, man. Yeah. You're funny. But yeah, no, it's, I think before, and I think with a lot of what I've done, it was more mindless than mindful. Mm. I was, there was a lot of areas of my life that I was already simplifying, but I was just going about it without a thought. Like it was just my normal routine, but now I've been trained to think more critically about the things that I do, what I'm putting in my body, what I'm not putting in my body, what we're bringing in the house, what we're not bringing in the house. And so it's been, this whole experience has been great just because I feel like we're more intentional, we're more mindful, we have clear values. And, and, you know, I've said it on a, a past episode is, you know, we're treating our family and our lives like a business, you know, we have a mission, a vision, our values and whatnot. And, you know, it's helping us steer our ship you know, in, in the direction we want it to go. 
Yeah, and that's kind of what I had in the second and third steps of what we started. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun here. I no, apologize. no, we just started questioning. So after we establish what do we value, like what are our three to four, I don't want to say our 10 values because then that can get very overwhelming when you yeah. have a ton of values. Like break it down, simplify your values to three, two, four. I mean, keep it simple enough where it's easy to make changes to align mm-hmm. to those values because if you have too many values, then it's going to get very complicated on how to kind of steer the ship and get yeah. rid of the excess that doesn't align with it. I mean, where we're at, this is six years in the making. Yes. And I mean, five years if you count our marriage, but I mean, we've been dating for a little over six years, but we're still evolving as well. And it kind of goes back to always practicing, always, you know, reevaluating and, and making changes depending on where you're at in our life. But this has been a six year process for us. And when we can introduce something new that helps simplify our lives is something we have to go through together. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one example I can think of off the top of our head is when we read Marie Kondo's book and we were like, okay, I mean, we were still pretty good with clothes, but you know, we knew we can do a lot better Uh, with our wardrobe, with our wardrobe Mm -hmm. and even just how we're folding. Like I still do the whole folding and stuff like that. It takes me probably 45 minutes to fold my laundry. I just do one load two uh, every two weeks but it takes me 45 minutes to fold my laundry the way that she taught me how to do it. But I love the way that it looks in the drawers. I love the way like it's all done. So to me, it's well worth the time. And this is a little off topic, but if you would have seen, if we would have seen that video before we started simplifying our life, I think we would have never done it because we would have said we don't have enough time. Right. Because we were living such busy lives and we weren't as mindful and we were doing a lot of things that weren't truly aligning to our values, we probably would have said, this is ridiculous. Who would spend that much time folding their laundry right. this specific way? But because we have the space and time now that we've made that space and time, we've s- intentionally slowed our lives down and mm-hmm. only chose things or, and still continue to choose things that re- we really, really, truly say hell yes to. It's right you're open to that now. And I think that's another shift in itself is that because we've slowed our life down, we are open to Mm. adapting and changing and we're not, you know, well, that's not going to work and complaining about things because we're so inundated with all of the chaos of life and just kind of how we were living before, but didn't really truly realize it. (laughs) Yeah. I, I would say that most of the things in our lives now is always a hell yes. Any events that we're going to, um, people we're hanging out with, things we do at home, it's it's always a hell yes. And I like that. Um, I forgot who, I forgot who said that, but I remember hearing that Stone before. Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> if it's oh, not hell a, yeah. If it's not a hell yes, it's a no thank you. I think it's more like a hell no or something like yeah. that. But I feel like we we live by that. If it's not like a hell yes immediately in our gut, like we're really excited about it, then we're like, that's okay. No, thanks. Kindly let it go. But yeah, so after we kind of talked about what we truly, truly value, then I thought we just really, we just started questioning and we first started questioning, at least I did. I started questioning my time, how I was spending my time. And when I mean, I know we have seven days in a week, but really I looked at a typical day, like how I spend most of my time. And that was usually work days. Like what am I doing Monday through Friday? Because when I was going through infertility treatments, I was spending a lot of time stressing and worrying about getting pregnant and commuting to get blood work. And that's when it really hit me that, okay, I need to cut out something because I'm spending a lot of time commuting and doing things that aren't really filling me up. No, which also adds to the stress. Yes. Yeah. So that's when I first started looking at my days and realizing that there were things I was doing really for reasons that I wasn't quite sure. For example, I was I was working out very regimentally mm-hmm. and I realized I was kind of doing it for reasons of more of comparison. Now looking back on it because, you know, there's a lot of motivators on Instagram of people working out and you have this community where you're working out together, but at the same time I was so fearful to revert back because I was working out and getting certain results physically and seeing the other progress of other people, I would compare my progress to their progress. And I was afraid to stop and revert back to a body that I wasn't appreciating before. And I realized that that was putting stress on my body and my hormones. And I'm pretty sure that affected me getting pregnant. 
but looking at my time and really being reflective and honest with myself, I was not doing it for the reasons that really aligned to what I value in life. Mm -hmm. So I stopped doing that, which took a great, gave me an hour back to my life of just walking in nature and spending time with you. So I think just looking at, even if it's your job, like, yeah, that Am was, I, happy? I was getting I, ready to say that yeah, and I know, with my job. It yes. was taking me an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes to get to it in the morning and then another hour and 10 on the way home. And I was like, man, that is just way too much time in the car. And especially after we had Lucille, it was like, OK, I am missing her growing up and, you know, these times that I can't get back. Isn't it crazy like what one hour does? It's, it's insane. Like coming home yeah. one hour later, just it sucks up a good portion of your time. Oh, it does. And, you know, so, you know, for you, it was infertility that really kind of sparked a lot of change for me. It was commute. And, you know, for other people, it can be a thing that they're going through or or, or just, you know, have a, have some kind of inkling in themselves that say, Hey, you know, I want to make a change and, you know, you go ahead and do it. But yeah, I mean, it's, again, I think it always goes back to constantly evaluating. But yeah, really, we just looked at how we were spending our days. So we were just asking questions like, okay, how do I want to spend my day? You know, why do I have this job? Do I like this job? You know, why am I working out so much? You know, why am I eating this? Or why do I shop here every week? Or why do I go here when I'm (laughs) bored? Like really being reflective of things I was doing in habit because everybody else was doing it and questioning why am I doing this? Like, what is the real reason? Like, is this really truly making me happy or am I just feeling a void? Is it just something to distract me from what I'm feeling? And there were things I was doing like shopping mindlessly at Target once a week, Target. just going to browse thinking that, oh, this was making me feel better. But really it was just distracting me from how I was feeling. And I was feeling very stressed out during that time. Right. And I found that walking in nature not only was way better for my health, but it made me feel a hell of a lot better mentally, Mm -hmm. physically, and, and it didn't cost anything, Yeah, which was great. And it wasn't accumulating any clutter in my home that I didn't realize was a problem until we did start looking at our environment. And that's kind of what I had as the third step. So we first established our values. Then we looked at how we were spending our time. And I think third was really looking at our environment, Yeah, what we were surrounded by not only things, but people and just realizing what kind of atmosphere environment or what do we want our surroundings to feel like, to look like, you know, um, there was a lot of clutter in our lives and we never realized that because we thought that was what we were supposed to do. That's what the norm is. You buy a house, you fill it with things and that's what everyone else is doing. Put extra pillows on the bed. (laughs) (laughs) And it sounds so silly when I, when I talk about it, like just realizing that growing up, we had things a certain way. And I always go back to this, like there's a bed and you always have side tables next to your bed. Nightstands. Nightstands, side tables. You get the point. But it was, it was almost like looking at things that we thought that's just what you do. And then I started just questioning those really simple things. Like, why do I have to have that? Like, what if I don't even use that table? Like, why does it have to be that way? And it's just really simple, minute shit. <laughs> well, and it's funny. <laughs> that like, I, I would think start there was questioning. Something, there were some things that I think we, we questioned early, like before we really got into this. Like, we questioned why we had a dining room and a living room. And we were like, okay, well, we don't have money to like completely redo our kitchen, you know, the way that we would want to. That would, you know, it costs an arm and a leg to do that. But what can we do to kind of expand the kitchen? And we were like, okay, well, let's make the dining room into what we call the butler's pantry, where we have our coffee station and we have, you know, shelves full of like flour and and stuff like that, uh, cookbooks and everything. So we were like, okay, this is just going to be a big butler's pantry that's, you know, kind of out in the open. And we're going to move the dining room into what is the living room in the front part of the house. So we have our dining room table in there. It was like, you know, there, there are certain ways that they set up houses and they say, this is your family room. This is your living room. This is your dining room. It's even on the freaking plans of the, of the house. That's true. And I was like, 
who are you to designate what room is what? I mean, <laughs> it is funny. I never, I never thought about that, but they <laughs> but do have is. those labels on there. So it's like, what if we decide not to label that? Like, I feel like if you do something different, you feel out of place and different, which yeah. makes you feel isolated from everyone else. But then once we realize that there is a community of people who are doing things the way they want to do it. And once we realized that it was like, you know, that was a eureka moment for it us. Was. It was like, why, why are we doing this? Because this is the way they told us to do that. It's like, yeah. that is bullshit. Why do we have our China sitting in a closet just for decoration? We, it's not even China. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I had to, it was just questioning things that were, that seemed that we just grew up with. And I don't know. I don't even know how to put it. It just, it's just the little things around us. We started questioning in our home and yeah. our environment that we never looked at that way before. But once we started questioning how we were spending our time and we realized we didn't want to spend a lot of time cleaning and maintaining things right. in our home, that's when we started looking at our environment. And that was, kind of the the third step of what we were doing was looking at our home, what in our home was actually serving a purpose mm -hmm. and what in our home was getting in the way of what we value yeah. and going back to those values. Is this getting in the way of having experiences? Is this getting away of having time with family? Is this mm -hmm. getting in the way of our health? And that's when it made it a lot easier. And I think that's why you have to have your values because it makes it so much easier to cut out what, is distracting you from what you truly want out of life. Right. So yeah, we, we decluttered a lot, a lot. We like, got rid of a lot was, of stuff and we we're had, still getting rid of a lot of stuff. And, and we've had some episodes where we talked about decluttering. These are, these are some of our early episodes and you know, those were really great because we had just done that and we were able to kind of pass along our, uh, our experience with that. But, you know, when we did the whole decluttering, we had a dump pile, we had a donate pile, and then we had a keep pile. I mean, that was basically it. And it's yeah. stressful going through stuff. It is. Um, it's not easy it's, doing it. It's that. hard to make those decisions to let things go. And, and, you know, part of it could be is, okay, well, you spent a lot of money on it. Yes. Part of it is, you know, well, this is, you know, something that somebody gave me. It has sentimental value. Um, there's nothing else like it. But I mean, what we at the end of the day, we really had to ask ourselves is, you know, is this it kind of again goes to the Marie kind of thing? Is this bringing joy in our life? But more importantly, is this something that we're actually using or is it just yes. sitting here collecting dust? Or are we only busting it out once a year or not even at all? So it was just like, OK, when we when we really looked in, and saw that things weren't getting used and it's just sitting there, it's like, OK, it's it's a little bit easier to let that stuff go. But it's it's definitely a, a mental thing and it, it's it's tougher for other people um, or for some people than other people, but you know, you have the power to do it. And, and when you do finally get rid of something, you don't end up missing it. No, at all. Like you really don't. We think we need it and we truly don't. And that's what we kind of realized too, as we started getting rid of things in our environment that were causing us stress and we're adding to our cleaning time. It, it was just this light had, it was just a lightness of our lives now. Mm -hmm. Like a load had been lifted yeah. and I didn't realize how much of a burden stuff could actually bring you until we started owning our own home. And I think you see things as a kid and you don't think about it because you don't have the responsibility of taking care of all those things. Yeah. But when you become an adult, nobody talks about the stress of maintaining and keeping yeah. all this stuff. And I don't understand why nobody talked about that. Like, how did my mom do? I don't know how she did it. And my yeah. grandmother, it's no, just, it's, it's tough. And, oh and even, you know, I can understand why they would get upset if we didn't do our chores, you know, yeah. it was actually helping them out. I mean, you know, they're at work, you know, 40 hours a week and we're, you know, kids at home getting off. And, and you know, I'm not talking about us being like six or seven years old, but you know, to the point where, you know, we're in maybe middle school and high school and we should really, really be helping out. Um, you know, with dinner, or just, you know, mm -hmm. keeping the house clean, doing dishes. And, you know, I, I, I definitely look back on it and, and understand when my parents got upset if, if we didn't, you know, do our chores. It all makes sense. It does because, you know, <laughs> you're a family unit and you should all work together to, to help maintain the house. Um, yeah, think yeah, about it's, the stress it's tough, yeah, you know, that our and, parents had. Yeah, no, so you completely respect, you know, everything that they, they've done to, to, you know, raise us and, you know, 
looking back on it, you know, I could have done better, you know, in my part on, on getting things done. Um, but you know, well, I think it's good. It's cool that we're reflecting on this now about how our parents may have felt because now we can have these open and honest conversations with Lucille yeah. and talk to her about how we were stressed when we had a lot of stuff and how we feel a lot happier. I mean, she's going to see that we're happier by our actions. And I think um, just to get into the nitty gritty of it, when we talk about our environment, I think the first places specifically that we started looking at were the most popular places in our home that we spent the most time. Yeah. And that was the kitchen, the Definitely living room the and our bedrooms. Yep. So those were the spaces that we really dove into first because we wanted those spaces to make us feel calm and make us feel happy because we're in them all the all time. All the time, yeah. yeah. So I think as we started getting rid of things and kindly letting them go and selling them and finding them new homes, we almost made rules, at least I did, to help m almost gamify it like you talked about in our yeah. cleaning episode to make it fun. For example, when we started going through our bedroom, I had a lot of clothes, a lot more than Nick did. And I was always a minimalist when it came to the clothing line. You kind of were, and I never understood it until now. But yeah. I started kind of establishing... They cost money. <laughs> I, so I think I started doing challenges that other people created. It was like the 10 by 10 challenge yeah. or um, the the hanging that's where you hang your clothes a different way with your hanger. And if it's that way for like six months, then you know that you're not wearing it. So I started just trying out challenges and experimenting all these different minimalist wardrobe challenges. And then I came to the conclusion of all of these challenges. What I realized with my clothes is that I'm only keeping clothes that make me feel a hundred percent comfortable and a hundred percent confident. So I made a rule. It's like my one rule wardrobe. And I even wrote a blog post about it because it was like this epiphany that all through all of these challenges, there's only one, there's one thing in common. Like if it doesn't fit and make me feel amazing and make me feel really good, then like, why am I holding on to it? It's just sitting in my drawer, collecting dust or taking up space and energy, which in, we talked about how physical clutter is mind clutter. And yeah. since then it's like, I've, I don't want to say I've got it down, but man, my wardrobe is, is making me happy. Yeah. It's only bringing me joy. It's not bringing I me stress. Tell. I don't have any type of decision fatigue anymore. I think it's awesome that I'm rewearing clothes over and over again and I'm wearing them out. Like I am so excited to, when I finally see a hole in a shirt because I'm like, damn, I wore this shirt so much because I loved it that I can finally replace it with something new. And that's another rule, the whole one in one out rule. Like yeah. we, when we bring something in the home, we take something out. You definitely walk down the stairs with more confidence now. <laughs> Shut up. You're not even and up when I, when I... You're like, yeah, I feel confident. I just, I I feel good wearing the same blue shirt yeah. week after week after week because I know it fits to a T and I'm very comfortable you and I want to be able clothes, to... baby. I appreciate that, yeah. honey. But yeah, so we definitely started with the spaces that we were in the most. It just made the most sense to us. And then we started going in the spaces that maybe we weren't in as yeah. much, like going through the dining room the and dining room. the garage. The garage is still yeah. a work in progress. Always, um, yes. The basement. The basement. You know, bathrooms. Yeah, bathrooms. Although we spend a lot of time in bathrooms. So. We do. Um, and that was, I kind of linked that one to the bedroom a little true, bit. That true. was kind of, you know, a, a all in one kind of thing. But yeah, I mean... It, and again, it's not something that you can do overnight, um, but, you know, you just kind of have to keep, you know, chipping away at it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you go with the Marie Kondo style when it comes to the wardrobe, you go all in, you know, and, and try to get it done as quickly as possible so that, you know, you don't get stuck or forget about it. And I think it's okay to get stuck or to pause if you yeah. are getting overwhelmed by the process because decluttering and getting rid of things and just simplifying things in your life it takes a lot of time it's not something that's going to happen overnight i mean this is how many years like six years in the making so this has been an ongoing process and it's not something that was done in a week in a day it's it's going and it's continuing to going and i think just making sure that you have no expectations or comparison to other people and just doing it at the pace that makes sense to you i think is most important ma'am you know, it's kind of funny. It took seven days for God to build the world. It's taken us a couple of years to, to get this house in order. 
bad joke, guys. Oh, man. But I, I had this... <laughs> I'm going to get serious here. Uh-oh. Um, Jilly's getting serious. And I kind of got emotional about it. I had this thought when I was driving home that, you know, thinking about when Lucille's older, like the story she's going to tell about her mom. And I... I don't want her stories to go like, to go like this, for example. Um, my mom was too busy, blank. My mom was too frazzled or my mom was so stressed or my mom was so mad. I don't want any of those stories to start like that when she talks about me, which is even more motivation for us to keep on this journey because since we started simplifying, I feel like I have so much more patience and space in my heart for chaos and i find that i'm kinder and more open for things that may seem strange or weird to me like i'm i just find that i'm such a happier and healthier human since simplifying everything it's completely changed my mindset through this process and i guess i keep thinking of the stories that lucille is going to talk about me in the future one day and i want those stories to be positive and to be funny and full of life and nothing full I don't want to have any regrets of how we're living. And I want Lucille to see that in yeah. how we're living. I couldn't have said that any better. I, I feel the same way. So I find that we definitely have control over the story of our life. And all mm-hmm. we can do is control the story we're making day to day. And hopefully Lucille will see that and hopefully want to do the same. Yeah. In her own original, unique way. <laughs> That's exactly good stuff. Jilly. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any uh, resources you'd like to share with our lovely listeners? I do. Um, it's someone on Instagram that... The Graham. The Graham, that their posts are always inspiring to me. And it's such a light to see just positive quotes or just um, pictures or it's something so simple, but it adds to my cup, per se, if you want to call it my cup. And it fills me up and... I wanted to give her a shout out. It is her Instagram handle is at minimalist.motherhood. And I wanted to share some of the, she shares quotes and pictures about just snippets of what's going on in her Mm -hmm. life. But some of the quotes she has are, are pretty streamlined and to keep me, keep us on kind of the direction we're going. Straight and narrow. Yeah. Because we still, we still need motivation to keep going. I find that we still have to feed our soul with you do. It, it, you know. constant motivation and inspiration or else I can immediately, I can see myself regressing and not moving forward. And I want to move forward. You I don't want to, wanna, yeah. I don't want to stop growing. So some of the quotes that she has on there are live less out of habit and more out of intent. Guard your time fiercely, be generous with it, but be intentional about it. Yeah. And I think that's so true. You have to be, you have to set boundaries. You do. Um, small changes eventually add up to huge results. And that's definitely been true with us. Huge. <laughs> Fill your life with adventures, not things. Have stories to tell, not stuff to show. I really like that. I do too. Yeah. Conversation is the best. If it doesn't add to your life, it doesn't belong in your life. I think that's another cool way to look at it. Is this going to make me grow into the person I want to be? And if it's not, why am I spending time doing it or hanging out with those people? Um, Clutter is not just the stuff in your floor or on your floor. It's anything that stands between you and the life you want to be living. It's all good stuff right there. Those are just some of the quotes that I just really grab my attention and I really like how intentional she was and purposeful yeah. choosing those that really spoke to me. So I just wanted to give her a shout out to hopefully give her motivation to keep on going because I'm paying attention yeah. and I like her feed a lot. That's great. And then of course we have a couple of episodes that we referenced throughout the podcast and those will be in the show notes. Yes. If you haven't listened to those episodes, they are fantastic. We <laughs> definitely recommend you check them out. Any other references you have there, Jilly? No, that's it. Well, let's get into that quote of the day. All right. I know I said a lot of quotes and then I'm, I had to come. I'm going to quote <laughs> and quote and quote. quote this Jilly. quote is... I think I actually got it from her feed too. Oh. So she may have said it or may have got it from someone else, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's very simple. Make space for the life you want to have. And you can't make space unless you look at your life and question it and make changes. Yeah. So follow those steps that we gave you today. 
All right, Jilly. So do you want your take action Let's challenge? Take some action. Even though I feel like we've been constantly saying we just it told you this. how to take action this whole episode. <laughs> just do it, Nike. It's just to pick one area of your life that's stressful or causing you to feel overwhelmed and just yeah. to question it. And I think overall this whole episode, it's just let go of the excess and the fillers and just get back to the core of what truly makes your soul yeah. smile. And then just be like Michael Jackson and make that change. Gonna make the change. Yeah. I'm taking it there. <laughs> I wish I could sing like him. I can't. Nobody can sing like Michael. Nobody. He's the best. He is. Absolute best. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for this week, Jilly. I think so. Well, thank you everybody for listening. We really, really appreciate your support and we love you guys and we'll talk to you again next week. See you later, guys. We want to thank everybody for listening today. Please be sure to subscribe and sign up to receive notifications so you know when the next episode is live. If you like today's episode and know someone who could benefit from the topic we covered, please share it with them. And if you have any suggestions for us and want to chime in on today's topic, you can email us at simplifiedchaospodcast at gmail.com, and that's chaos with a K, or send us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you.